Uh, thank you very much for having us here today. This is a really important topic to us. Most of you know, probably know who Tees Australia is. We're a big beef manufacturer and feedlotter in the country. And as in the last eight years we've moved away from being a commodity provider and got to know the public, well, for the about six years we're really confused by them. I've got some great videos another time where we just show producers three minutes of what the public think and you're very confused by the end of it, right? Because everyone's got a different view. And this is a presentation we're giving around the country uh, to about 8,000 cattle producers um, last year and this year. Uh, and it's a lot longer when we're talking to them, so I'm going to rush through the first part. And we talk about a sustainable relationship because I hate the term social licence. Because we go and get a driver's licence, we put it in our pocket and we're good for 10 years. Nothing could be further from the truth with this topic. This is something we've got to be absolutely relentless at. We've got to be there and engaging all the time. So we start by asking how we do it. Well, we don't be defensive, I think is really important. Uh, the picture in the top left kind of made me famous for a while in the agricultural industry. That's me with the animal, um, Animals Australia, RSPCA and Andrew Wilkie. Um, and that was on the back of the live export Four Corners story back in 2011. And we did that because in our business, we were seeing meat sales drop and we had people coming into the business saying, I don't want to work here anymore. You don't do that. Right? That was the message. More recently, you see in the map in the middle, that's our friends at Aussie Farms. And there's been a lot of talk in the media from ag about got to get it torn down, etc. Just think though, what does that tell the public? The people that are just moderately engaged in this. What it says is, I don't trust you. What are you hiding? Why do you want to tear it down? We want to have a bit of an alternative approach, I guess. And my friend with his head in the sand, we use that a little bit to try and you know, we might get a bit tarred and feathered when we go to some you know, places in the bush when we make that point, but we've got to get out there. And this one's obvious to everyone in the room, but the public matter heaps, because every dollar we have, the reason I can stand here and talk, comes from someone buying one of our products. And they vote, and uh, they're going to vote soon, and uh, we've all got our views about what that might mean. So, really important. Um, obvious statement, but... We've got to understand them, even if we as people in ag don't get them in the bush. And I'm going to introduce you to those two guys and ask for your help at the end because I've got a bit of a project going on myself, actually, to do some communication. Uh, the first point about the public is they all live in big cities. Um, I think we've got about 25 million people, roughly. You can add that up quickly. That's 14.6 million of us live in those six cities. 82% of us live in 50 cities. And that map there isn't quite to scale. That's on those red dots where most of them live. So the point is they're getting very disconnected with what we do. And we had the benefit of geography. Uh, and thanks to Bernard Salt for that map there. Um, but that really shows you what's been happening in the 25 years after 1991. The population grew by some 6.8 million, I think. But in the red area, 300,000 people left. So. We're wanting to live more and more on that eastern seaboard, and uh, I'm sure there's plenty of us that feel like the, the, one of those Facebook memes there. And we won't get into the data, but some real data. 30% of consumers think that better animal welfare means it tastes better and is better for you. That's really important because that's <laughs> about purchasing decisions. And, yep, one in 10 of us are vegetarians or vegans. That was back in 2003. I don't know, have anything more current than that. And the, the, that's a EU chart on the side, but this is important worldwide. And when, after that last slide, I always get asked, well, what's they got to do with real consumers, right? That's your opinion. But this is one of our brands in our business, 36 South, and we've actually tested consumers, and it comes through time and time again. You can see those key things. What's the animal being fed? What's the connection to the region? What's animal welfare like, et cetera, sustainability. It comes through every time we go out and test consumers. Um, and what's important is that we tap ourselves into that. And it's really basic, but we care because people buy on the basis of how they feel. We always go home and we can go and buy a new toy or you know something, and we go home and I justify to my wife and say, look, look at this list of features, how fantastic is it? Uh, I bought that because it feels good. I've gone down the list of features saying, geez, I better justify why I just went and bought that. Right? That's what happens with all purchases. And that's exactly why animal welfare and environmental management matter. 
And the message we give producers, it's that message of a happy and a healthy animal. Now, we all, anyone from the industry knows that's probably not the ideal beef animal, but that's not the point, right? And it helps explain this explosion of what we're calling fake meat, plant-based protein. Um, I've taken the slide out about the chemically reproduced meat, that's a whole other story. But this is happening because there's bunches of meat eaters out there that want to feel better about themselves or think that they're eating something better. And how do we know that as manufacturers and people that sell to retailers? Well, why is it sitting there? That's in a sea of red in Woolworths. Now, no vegetarian or vegan's going to go down there hoping for a good feed, right? Because that's all they're going to find. That's there for a meat eater. And rather than fight it, my view is really simple. We can tap into what's good and natural about what we do and offer that as an alternative, right? This is not about, this is not a, yes, it does have some uh, vegetarian or vegan customers. This is about a meat eater to give them another choice. Absolutely, the flexitarian or what, it, what they're calling it today. But the good news is, and there's lots of good news in this, we've got choices that can make them feel good. And we know through the work we've done with consumers that grass-fed ticks all the boxes. And uh, he's appearing more and more. This is Aussie. He's, um, well, in cow years, he's a millennial, right? So he's going to do a lot of talking about the industry. We've actually got a little cartoon strip going, which I'll show you at the end, about a month old. He's gone out there recently celebrating Clean Up Australia Day, right? Because farmers are all about sustainability. And we're going to keep using him to go out there in a non-threatening way, educating people about the industry. But that's where your help will be needed at the end. And again, we're lucky because what we produce, people care about. Um, we can, with the, with the right effort, tick all those boxes in our industry. Don't worry, beef and, and sheep meat around the world, that is a premium protein. That's the Ferrari of proteins going around. And we tick all those boxes, and Australia is uniquely lucky in that particular area, uh, as long as, it, as, long as that we can back up what we do. Now, we won't dwell on this one. And as a representative of the supply chain, there's some great work being done by these organisations, and RMAC particularly call it out around sustainability, but we can't rely on them to get the job done. It's our job. We're the owners of the food, and really good commentary before about trust. If you can't trust us, you can't trust anyone. And we need to understand the competition um, because they're really effective and really agile. There's some, won't dwell on the photos too much, but the one in the far was taken by a colleague at a meat science conference last year that went out. The only important is that's a young lady in a school uniform, right? So, you know, she's out there promoting the cause of this organisation. This lady's written a book for school children about live export, and it's not in favour of it. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> and uh, here's our friends, I think Animals Australia, are about putting pressure on Starbucks around caged eggs. Now, it's no surprise why organisations like Starbucks get targeted. We always wonder why, but Here's a really simple strategy, this is a wine glass, and I think it's WWS from memory. And a really simple strategy, right? There's lots of consumers, lots of producers, quite a few manufacturers, but not very many global retailers or global quick service restaurants. Let's get them, right? So they target those organisations and put pressure on their brands, right? So that's who we're up against. And I guess where it may be a bit of frustration in my voice, they're talking to our consumers and our public and we're not at the table. Now, you don't need to worry about the issues here. Long-running industry issue on the far around unstunned slaughter and halal. Don't worry about the detail. Worry about it's been shared 27,000 times. Animals Australia often get called a fringe group. Really, they've got 1.6 million Facebook followers. And look down here, how many of them have been... This is an Animals Australia view around dehorning and debutting. Now, I don't want them representing us. Right? We've got to go out there with that type of, you know, with our message while we do what we do. And I think we can be really effective as value chains, and we find it works in our business. One, you've got to state your credentials. And for the last three years, we've been doing a GRI report. Right? And we didn't love it at the start, going out there and talking about where we're at with uh, different sustainability measures, but really important. But as I said earlier, we've got to be really relentless. And these are just a snippet of the the community activities we're engaged in all day, every day around the sites where we operate. This pays you back big time. Right? 
you can have a union come out and say things about you, but if you're in the newspaper the following day talking about opportunities for people leaving school, you win. Right? But you've got to keep at it and do it all the time. Um, I think I explain this issue on a daily basis is that uh, you're going to end up at a marriage council or if your argument is that uh, you told your wife you loved her when you were married and if anything changes you'll get back to her. Right? <laughs> it's the same issue with that. And in our business, we try to be really open and transparent about it. Uh, this is from a few years ago, and yeah, that's me, and I don't know why you'd want to eat your McDonald's looking down at me, but Japan, they had a whole bunch of food safety issues, and they knew that the best way to uh, overcome the issues they created with their consumers is get out there and talk about the ordinary, everyday people that make their food. And that was a really successful campaign, definitely not because of the, uh, the models or the talent that they have, but because it got the message out there. That's an image of Jeff Tees, one of our directors off our website. Um, he, uh, he does a really, really good job of just talking authentically about why he does what he does. And what we said earlier about values is so true. Forget about what you do. If people can identify with your values, you're going to be successful. And it's why my friend is out there at the moment on social media trying to explain to people what it's about being part of the beef industry. And we've got a huge good story, and these are from the, um, the recent RMAC uh, Green Paper report. Huge numbers there, you know, uh, billions of dollars in exports and turnover, people employed. We're custodians of so much of the land, right? But don't forget, locally, we operate in towns like Rockhampton, Wagga, but um, Billawila. They know that the schools, the hospitals, the police force, etc., they're there because we are. We employ a lot of people, we generate a lot of activity, and we can talk about that. That's a really important. The success and health of the regions is intrinsically linked to us. And we have to kind of hurry up and do this because I think there's a kind of nasty intersection will happen if we don't really get on top of it. And our friends, the millennials that we talk about, want more and more information. But what's also coming through is they're finding it hard to find the information on packages. And there's another slide I took out of this presentation that shows they're becoming less and less trustful of what's written on packages. We've got to fix that, right? And that's what we're working at. And we can do it, as I said, by being open and transparent. Maybe not as much as they are in the US. This is the Glass Walls Project by Dr Temple Grandin. And there's some videos on there that go right into how animals are processed and slaughtered and presented for food. Now, I think my boss would have a heart attack if I went and suggested we did that tomorrow. That's a kind of transparency, though, that's important. And I think we want this guy to get out there and talk to people in simple language about some of the things we do. He was out there recently reminding people that 86% of the food he eats, humans can't eat. Simple misconceptions, and I can tell you from the responses to him on Facebook, people don't get it. MLA also have what might be, you might consider a much more flash presentation around good meat. That's also a really good site. And Absolutely agree, we need to build capability. Here's some pictures from Texas Tech University. Uh, they have a degree, a master's degree, PhD in agricultural communications. How cool is that? We've had interns from there in our business for the last two years. And these are really talented young people. That Their sole mission is to get out there and educate people about agriculture, and we need that in our country. And finally, uh, this guy, and my, my friend the Millennial Steer, and we're calling him Ambassador Aussie, we started him about a month ago, he's on Facebook, and I'd, I'd ask you, just have a look, there's some of the links there, at what he's trying to do. We are going to, every issue that's out there, we're going to get him out there talking about it, talking about our view in a simple way to communicate to people. Um, he's got a lot of advantages because he's got no politics, he's got no angle, um, he's only just out there to educate. So that's a, um, I've just managed just under the 15 minutes. Um, really happy to talk later around question, uh, and questions. It's an area that's really important in our business. And uh, as I said, we're not only committed internally, but educating everyone in our supply chain. Thank you.